Okay, this sermon is entitled, Charlie Michaels is Going to Hell. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 129 reads, Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth. May Israel now say, Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. The plowers plowed upon my back, they made long their furrows. Now, I wasn't really aware of who this guy was, this Charlie Michaels, false prophet, but I got a request to expose this unsaved devil, and I went to his channel, and what I found was a bunch of junk, a bunch of stupid, meaningless videos. But after listening to one, I realized that he's no different than any other false prophet. He's trusting in himself and his works, and he denies salvation by grace. So let's take a listen to him. Keep in mind, it sounds like he's chewing on cardboard or something, and it's going to be kind of difficult to understand. Here goes. They would always say, Acts 16, 30, 31. Uh, sorry, folks, but the context there, the Philippian general was not asking what he must do to be saved from hell. He was asking what he must do to be saved from being executed by the Romans, who would surely uh, cut him and his family into small pieces of the entire jail escape. Now, what he's saying is that the Philippian jailer was not asking Paul and Silas how to be saved from hell. And he's doing this to try to destroy the concept of faith in Christ alone. And see, whether the Philippian jailer was asking how to be saved from hell or not is immaterial. Because Paul and Silas were still telling him how to be saved. That would be necessary if he were executed by the Romans for allowing the prisoners to escape. And their answer was, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Now my question is, why is this unsaved devil singling out one verse in Acts when we have a plethora of scriptures in John that simply tell us to believe on Christ? John 3.15, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.18, he that believeth on him is not condemned. John 3.36, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. So there's a ton of scriptures that make it clear that the only condition for salvation is to believe on Jesus Christ for it. So let's keep listening to this false prophet. Here goes. I'm well, sorry, but the context there is we're talking about salvation. We won't get into that here. I, I think a better question that we should be asking instead of what must I do to be saved? I would say here's a better question. Who must I be to be saved? What sort of person must I be to be saved? Who am I that you should think that I am a Christian? Well, the only type of person you have to be to be saved is a sinner, and this question reveals that he believes that salvation is based on how a person lives. And according to him, you have to be a good person in order to be saved. But if that were the case, you wouldn't need to be saved in the first place. The reason why we need salvation is because we're not good people. We're all sinners. The Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. And that's why faith in Christ is the only condition, because it's the only thing we can do, is to simply believe on Jesus Christ for everlasting life. So this right here proves that he's unsaved. He's trusting in himself and his works and what type of person he is instead of trusting in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ and what he did. So let's take a listen to one more clip. Here goes. You need to examine yourself and ask, are you truly a new creation? Since you believe, since you said you were sinning a prayer or went down the aisle to the altar and were prayed over and accepted Christ as the Savior? Are you truly a new creation? So instead of looking to Christ, once again he's looking to self. He wants you to examine yourself to see what type of person you are when that has nothing to do with salvation 
because when Jesus Christ died on the cross 2,000 years ago, nobody today was even born. So what difference does it make of what type of person they are now when salvation was offered before we even existed? And it was by grace then, it's by grace now, it's always been by grace, it always will be. But see, unsaved false prophets like this devil won't accept grace. They don't want it to be by grace, they want it to be by works. And that's why Charlie Michaels is going straight to hell. Because it's not going to fly. When he stands before God at the great white throne judgment, he's going to be judged based on his works, and they won't be good enough. And that's why he'll be cast into hell. Because nobody is good enough. If we could be good enough, then why did Jesus die? And that's one question these stupid, unsaved, work salvation devils won't answer because they can't answer. And all they're basically doing is just spitting in Jesus' face, saying, I'm going to get to heaven on my own. I don't need the cross. I don't need grace. I don't need a blood sacrifice and a substitute. I'm good to go and I can save myself when that's not the case at all. So watch out for this stupid devil, this stupid liar, who's going straight to hell when he dies. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.